continuing with her story here. So Disney company has been offering, you know, uh, online streaming services, the Disney Plus, to offer customers, you know, if you want to watch their cut, uh, backlog, cut, cut, catalog, of, uh, plethora of movies from the Marvel franchises, the Star Wars franchise, and all their Disney films in the catalog. Uh, guess what? Obviously, Disney Plus is now uh, going to increase their subscription fee, which is, you know, kind of ironic. They're trying to capture the market, but they haven't technically captured the market compared to other Steam services. Obviously, we're talking of Netflix here. But anyway, so what they're planning to do here, they're going to increase the price hike here from $7 to $8 per month. Now, obviously, it may not seem much, $1 here, there. So it will jump to an annual subscription fee of $70 to $80 dollars per year here and the bundle of disney plus the the disney plus bundle meaning the espn and hulu will increase from 13 to 14 dollars a month here uh, let's see here now you know increasing price i'm not too too encourage here since Obviously, what's the advantage of increasing the price? Why increase it? You're trying to get more eyeballs in your platform here. Anyway, uh, so the Disney Plus uh, services uh, also saw increase in subscription fees in their other uh, company, which is Hulu, with live TV increase from seventy-one dollars to uh, from seven to seventy-one dollars from sixty-one dollars last December. Then you have also ESPN Plus. Uh, it rose from $50 to $60. Now, question is, does it make a compelling case to subscribe in their different platforms here if you want to watch, especially films or even television TV series, right? Even though they have the franchise mentioned, the Marvel, Star Wars, even Nat Geo, and they're now boasting 100 million subscribers. But the question is, how many are watching your uh, using your platform on a monthly basis, right? And how many are subscribing and unsubscribing is another matter here which is, you know, somewhat uh, iffy, <laughs> you know, if I can say that. Anyway, obviously, one of their key features here is they're offer offering premium op access uh, in terms of allowing users to pay uh, to see major films from home the same day the release in theaters. And again, so I have to pay the subscription on top of paying another, uh, another fee for watching the films here. Then why not just wait for the movie theaters to release it and watch it there right and you know i really don't like where you know movie comp movie studios like whether warner brothers or even in this case disney is trying to capture streaming services which is you know they're lagging behind in terms of subscription base and in terms of not say user access but it, it it only divides your user user base in terms you have to pay exclusive amount to a certain Steam service so that you can watch only a few films. It was even better when they, uh, what do you call this? When they, not necessarily sold. What, what, what's the term? I forgot the term. Anyway, so when they uh, sort of rented, they licensed, that's the right term. When they licensed the TV series or even movies to Netflix, so they still break in the millions and billions of dollars. But obviously, Netflix is the go-to so that you just click Netflix, you can watch all of the films in one go. And obviously, greedy as they are, you have Warner Brothers going to HBO Max, then you have Disney going to Disney Plus, and then Paramount going to Paramount Plus. So it's all fragmented and segmented so that, you know, it's like watching cable TV. You have to watch different, so many channels just to watch a particular film and you know, it gets confusing anyway. And, you know, obviously they're touting the later release this year of Cruella, that's one. And you also have Marvel Studios Black uh, Widow. And they're also pushing for Marvel series. You have the WandaVision and I think, uh, what was the other one? Okay. Not the Mandalorian. Uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. So will, pe will people be excited to subscribe and if i were the case you know i would just simply subscribe to one month maybe binge watch the entire series in one go then do i really need to subscribe the whole year and so forth i will have to wait and see here and actually here we have uh, yeah we can see how netflix uh, revenue and usage here and we can see we can compare 
Ah, there you go. You see the subscriber here. So would be interesting to compare. So you can see here. So Netflix user, Netflix users in terms of service, you can see here you have Netflix, Amazon, Disney, and so forth. So you can see the subscribers. Netflix is still by far the biggest of a little over 200 million subscribers, right? Even though Amazon Prime has the ha second highest, not far behind, almost 150. But again, if you're Amazon Prime subscribe, meaning you're an Amazon uh, subscriber, meaning you buy products in their platform, right? So that's why it's easy for you to purchase or they give you discounts to be a Prime subscriber here. But anyway, look at uh, Disney's. Now, obviously, this is not yet updated since December 20th. It's closing to 100 million, which is... You know, still below Netflix, right? But if you look at the other major companies, you have Warner Brothers for HBO Max only has 38 million, less than 50 million. Then you have Peacock, which is owned uh, or owned by Warner Brothers, and uh, not Warner Brothers. Uh, what do you call this? Universal. There you go. Less than 50. Then you have CBS or Paramount only has less than 20. And even worse is Apple, right? Try to go into streaming services but you only have less than 10 to 30 million subscribers and again it's too fragmented and at the end of the day the key to any success for any streaming services which what netflix has uh done you know tremendously is investing in a lot of content obviously a catalog of older films tv series is important but obviously what new content you release is also more as important like like you know one of the advantage of the disney plus subscribers is the mandalorian but outside the mandalorian what are you going to watch obviously if you go to netflix there are several series that you can watch and they're producing uh but i don't like uh, i like the witcher i watch the witcher actually the stranger things that's very popular in netflix i haven't watched it but i plan to watch it in the future and then uh, i watch reruns of the criminal minds which is owned by CBS, by the way, but still, you know, licensed to Netflix. But either way, again, as you can see here, that the data shows that you know, Netflix has already you know leaps uh, made their mark in terms of investing in a lot of content, and you know they're the pioneers in terms of streaming services here. Now, can other companies catch up? Maybe, but question is, it'll get it'll take a long time and increasing the price is not going to endear yourself with your consumer base here and it's easy enough for anyone any consumer to just you know uh stop the subscription and you know go to a different one rather than pay all subscriptions to all of those services here